I believe with all of my heart that we are all presenters. Some of us are presenters here at TEDx Sarasota. Some of us are presenting in a business meeting where that presentation, your story, is going to get you from here to here and that company from here to here. You may be presenting as a high school English teacher and those kids are leaning on every word you say. You may be presenting at your first job interview and you're going to get from here to here. You may be presenting as a volunteer soccer coach for 10-year-old girls. They don't know the rules you do. They lean on your words. You may be presenting on a first date where the stakes are high and the anxiety is high. <laughs> you may be presenting on bended knee, asking that first date to spend the rest of their lives with you. Don't do that on the first date. <laughs> and there are ingredients that make our presentation, all of ours, our story resonate. Honesty, humility, and humor in that order. The honesty is not, hey man, you, you lost your wallet. That's a cool deed, but that's expected. Honesty is about all of us being able to get up with our voice, the voice that was gifted to us, and be accessible and vulnerable, vulnerable enough to be here. Humility. Humility is not the astronaut who says, uh, I do a little traveling. Yeah. No, dude, you went to the moon, man. <laughs> dude, you went to the moon and that's awesome. Humility is about taking that ego and that pride and those endorphins that do come in when you're presenting and keeping them at bay because it's not about you. It's about serving and humor. Oh. Humor is about laughing with, not laughing at. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I cannot wait to be made fun of. <laughs> and right now at this moment, I want to invite laughter in the room. It's been here before, and I'm inviting it right back. It's been here this morning. So has honesty, humility, and humor. When you find something that moves you and you want to laugh, laugh with, not at. With honesty, humility, and humor, you can serve your story. And I use the word serve specifically knowing that it has two meanings. To serve, to support your story. And to serve, to deliver your story. You can tell people what to do, and you can tell people your story. I've heard it. I've heard it from coaches when I was a kid. Let me tell you a little story. Everyone good? I didn't hear you. Everyone good? All right. No, we're not good. I don't dig that. <laughs> Let me tell you your story. I don't want to hear your story. I'm 10. <laughs> you can show people your story. We're doing it right now. I mean, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, and I'm sure we created something out there in the Wonder Zone that I don't even know about. But we are showing our story. But I challenge every one of us to use our story to move people. That's what we're starving for, to move. And we've done it this morning through music and through silence and through laughter and through imagery. But let's move. Let's put honesty and humility to the test. I'm going to do something. I'm going to say it's risky, but if you follow, follow these ingredients, it will be a really cool experience. I'm going to bring someone up, and we're going to put this to the test. Sir, I've never met you. I promise you I will make you look like a hero. I know you didn't show up. Go on. I can't wait to be on stage. Can I work with you up here for about four minutes? Is that okay? Yes. Awesome, dude. Give me a hand. <laughs> Woo. Come up here. What's your name? Joe. Joe, Joe, come walk this way because you're going to be Mike. You're going to come this way so we're both at the same volume. So Joe, give Joe a hand. This is a big deal. Joe, the mic's right there. Well, that's the first step is buy-in. So Joe, if you could just clip that to kind of your button there, and then you could just put the other one, the other part. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. And then put that in your pocket. Joe, you want to just say something so I can hear your voice? Hello? Awesome. Joe, oh, get up here. Come up here. Thanks, buddy. I've never met this man. This is not a, 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 a someone that's been planted, right? Absolutely awesome. not. Awesome. I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> and you're human. 
Joe, this is a game called Expert Speaker. And just listen to the title of the game. Expert Speaker. You are an expert. And so am I. And this is how it works. There are three rules. By the way, as I explain this, right at this moment, audience, presenters, are you rooting for him? Yeah. You are. You are. Wait. And, and that's sweet. That's nice. Now, but some of you are rooting for him because you're like, I'm glad he didn't pick me. <laughs> I know it. But this is a moment that is not scripted. None of this is where you have to understand as presenters, we are rooting. If you're in your right mind, you are rooting for this person. Joe, everything you say in this interview is correct, and I will agree with you. So if you say, Steve, I built this theater, I will say, I was there with you, Joe. That's why it says Joe's Theater. You got it? Sounds good. See, that's pretty good. Everything I say is correct, Joe, and you will agree with me. So if I say, Joe, I'm a carpet salesman, and I sell circle carpets, you're buying. Absolutely. And I, awesome. I'm with you. Uh, I'm telling you, as he says absolutely, I'm going from here to here to here. There's a third rule, not just for Joe, for all of us. I got to take care of him, he's got to take care of me. Don't be inappropriate. And we are not, <laughs> that wasn't even supposed to get a laugh, but laugh with <laughs> And Joe, you and I are both too funny and too smart to get a joke at each other's expense. You ready? Joe, you're going to step off the carpet for a second. Audience, I would like to hear a topic that Joe and I are both experts on. Joe, when you hear it, own it, and I will own it, and it may be something we have no idea, and then I will introduce you, and we will interview. Is that cool? Sounds good. Thank you, brother. And inside, you might be like, ah, but I don't see a bubble above your head, so we're good. Yeah. What's a topic that Joe Whammer. could... Whammer. I heard whammer first. Whammers? Whammer. Oh, no, that's a little inappropriate because no. <laughs> you go a weird way. That's okay, though. What is it? Go. Nuclear physics is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am thrilled as a semi-expert, but this gentleman really, like, like, he's really topped it off. He is a nuclear physicist <laughs> who works with both men and women, and he is, won the 2012 Sarasota Manatee Championship for Nuclear Physiology, and it's exactly pronounced that way. He won't say it again. He has a blog, and he has a MySpace account and a Facebook. Please put your hands together for Dr. Nuclear Physicist. Come on in, Joe. Come on in. Thank you. Everything you say. Oh, give him a love. Oh, okay. That's enough. Thank you. Yeah. Let me start, Joe. Nuclear. You're like a rock star. How does that feel? That feels really good. Yeah. Feels let's good. start. Yeah. Let's back up, Joe. You became a nuclear physicist at a very young age. Can you share your story on how you were the youngest nuclear physicist? You tell him. You tell him. Go ahead. How old were you? Uh. Luckily, I was, I was about 17. 17 years old. And you're 17, you're in your senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. You created a... Star in a jar. A star in a jar. <laughs> a star in a jar. It sounds unique. I don't think it's ever been done before. You're 17, you created a star in a jar. Absolutely. In and, my garage. Yeah, in a garage. <laughs> sounds so familiar. Joe, you wrote a... You wrote a book called... Creating stars, I am a star. Yes, I did. And that became a number one bestseller. <laughs> when you go to young nuclear physicists, what do you share with them? Some words of wisdom. You guys write this down. Go ahead. Jim. You know, luckily I got a lot of good material to work off of. Yeah. So somebody picked this great topic. Yeah. That, that kids can do things too, and, and yes. kids need to be empowered because that's how the world goes around. It starts with the kids. It can be dangerous. Nuclear physical all. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying it can be dangerous. <laughs> Joe, how do you say it with grace and expertise? Nuclear physiology. And it's got to be hushed. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you wrote another book called Whisper While You Invent. <laughs> now, it's not a question. That's just a statement. Joe, you go around the country. You tell people to reach for their stars. Where is nuclear physiology going? Wow, that's a great question. I know. I know. <laughs> Where's it heading? What can we Where's look for? Yeah. Share us. Just a, just a morsel, if you will. I'm thinking it's heading to a new frontier. A new frontier! <laughs> a new frontier. Give me a hand. Stay up here. Just stay a second. Just stay a second. That's the beautiful thing of taking a risk and getting a reward. Joe, I'll just tell you, and I'll let you sit in a second. You can take the mic off and put it right there. Were you nervous? Yes, I was. That's human. Every presenter needs to acknowledge that. It's also humble. Um, thank you for agreeing. Did you feel laughing with? Yeah, laughing with. It was great. It was all part of the experience. Cool. So thank you for it. speaking up. Thank you for smiling. Thank you when I said, here's a question that you answered it. 
thank you for having my back. Thanks for laughing with. Let's give Joe a hand. Good job, Robin. Thank you. You can just take that off and put that right there. I really appreciate that. Ooh. That was a great recall on the 17-year-old. <laughs> it was. Joe, as you take your seat, I want to share some things that you earned up here, but it's really for all of us. Joe, you're an expert speaker. You're not really a nuclear phys physiologist. I'm making those words up. I'm doing that purposefully. But you did it with honesty. I love that you sat down with the person next to you and she went, good job. That's what we need. You did it with honesty. You're not a hologram. I hope your name's Joe and you didn't lie. This is what you wore. You didn't plan this. And that, to me, is honest, not returning the wallet. That's expected. Humility. You didn't come up, guns a-blazing, boom, boom. By the way, no one should do that. No one should do that. Ever. You did it by not upstaging me. You followed the rules. You also participated, though. You could have sabotaged it. You did it without pride. You did it without ego. And in doing that, you moved the room. And you did it with humor. Because in that order, the result will be humor. But it's not debasing humor. And it's not poisonous humor. And it's not that type of humor that's gotten away from us. But it's the humor where we're laughing with and moving people. And you did it with the 17-year-old callback from that video we saw in the morning, correct? But you honored him without being snarky. Honesty, humility, and humor. This is where we want to be. These are the ingredients that serve our story. And this is where we want to be in the move position. But something pulls us away. And it's called fear. And where there is fear, there is no faith. And the fear sounds like this to me. And you could nod your head if you've ever heard these thoughts in your voice. By the way, these thoughts I'm sharing with you, I've heard today in me. I've heard them 12 minutes ago. I heard them when I was bringing you up. But I try to turn the volume down. Some of these thoughts of fear is, I don't want to sound dumb. Who wakes up in the morning and says, I can't wait to sound dumb? And I want to do it early so I can bask in it all day. <laughs> I don't want to be misunderstood. In this day and age, for all of us, man, you put that wrong update, that Facebook, other than deleting it, those 1,200 see it, then those 1,200 see it. You, it's a train that you can't slow down on Twitter. And it's not just the young kids, all of us. We don't want to be misunderstood because now it's out there. And you can't take it back. I don't want to get rejected. I was single till I was 40. And no one wants to go to that social event and go up to that beautiful person that says, you want to dance? No? That felt good. <laughs> All right. No, I'm not done. No, no again? Yeah, let's stay here. We're staying at this place, this bar called Rejection. No. <laughs> and then with that fear, we're not in the move, we're not in the show, we're not in the tell. We're off stage. We're off the red carpet. Where there is fear, there is no faith. But where there is faith, there cannot exist fear. How do I get through that fear? I challenge all of us to think of things that light us up. They are called coins. They are values. And they're things that you value. Coins are not things that do, you do what you do for a living or the obvious. Coins are things that light you up, that make you shine. Coins are things that... that Put a smile to your face, and when you think about them, and when you talk about them, and when you share them, it completes your entire picture. My honesty coins are that I'm from West Covina, California, WC. I uh, live in Bradenton with my wife now. I, uh, I love to travel. I love warm weather. I have a father who owned his own men's clothing store for 38 years in Arcadia, California. My mom's an artist. My brother won the Medal of Valor for the second time two weeks ago. He's a firefighter. He has three girls. The oldest one, Sarah, made me an uncle. My humility coins. My faith makes me humble every day. My wife makes me humble every day. <laughs> and my one-year-old daughter, Blake, makes me humble every day. And my humorous coins. Whoa. I love In-N-Out Burger. West Covina. I love that. That gets more claps than faith. That's interesting. But nonetheless, <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> but it can get me to talk about my faith. My humorous coins is I love old school hip hop. I wanted to be a DJ growing up. I still do. I love Run DMC, De La Soul, Dougie Fresh. When I heard Dougie Fresh beatbox, 
for the first time, I was like, Dude, I want to be that guy. I didn't look like that guy, but I want to be like that guy. Through a colleague of mine, I have to give him credit, my wife and I last week watched four episodes in the road of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> these are some of my humorous coins, and these are the things that light me up. Because we are born to be in the move position. And if we want to get back to that place of faith, we have to think of things that light us up, that give us value, that put a genuine smile on our face. We were born here, and I'm not saying that because I'm an expert in being born. I don't remember that moment. We were all born. But I will tell you what I do remember. Is a year ago last week, two miles away at Sarasota Memorial Hospital, my daughter Blake was born. And when she entered this world, she didn't come out telling us her story. Could you imagine? Like, that was a long nine months. <laughs> that was, that's, uh, I'm glad I'm here, man. Welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm Blake. No, I know. I'm your, I'm your father. <laughs> she didn't tell us her story because she couldn't talk. And she didn't show us her story because she doesn't have Instagram. She doesn't have a cell phone yet, okay? <laughs> Could you imagine, though? Uh, just got born. Update. <laughs> but what my daughter did my wife and my daughter did is she came into this world and she moved us because she was moving and she was vulnerable. And not only did she move my wife literally and, 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 and emotionally and metaphorically, she moved the nurses and she moved me and she moved my two sister-in-laws and she moved my mother-in-law in the room and she moved that entire room with her spirit, without words, without showing, just by being. And she did it with honesty, humility, and humor. Honesty, she just showed up. There's no mirror, there's no clothes, here I am. That is honest, as honest can be. And her humility, she didn't come out and be like, I'll, I'll cut this, I'm good, I'm good, doc, I got this. <laughs> no, she did the opposite, she said, I need you. I need you. There's no ego and pride. It's just help me survive. And she did it with humor. Have you ever seen a baby born? They're like funny looking. They're like blue, and there was laughter in the room. There was. Laughter for relief, laughter through spirit, laughter through, we're tired, laughter through exhaustion, and just pure laugh with. My daughter was born with honesty, humility, and humor, and so were we. And I challenge all of us to figure out what lights us up, what makes us shine, what allows us to be an expert, Joe, and own that. Own it with all your heart and all your being. And when you own that presentation, when you own your story, I want you to deliver it with honesty, humility, and humor, and I want us all to move people. We are starving for it. It is time. Let's move people. Thank you.